was on, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Ross, I like games, and today we're going to be having a look at the most powerful creatures in Keyforge. Now, obviously, we're going to be looking at that little number of power, but there are also some other creatures which have the potential to be bigger, though only under certain circumstances, and we're going to look at the cutoff after which creatures have to have a significant downside. And we'll also be giving commiserations to the houses that just don't have any good creatures. So if we start off with a top six list of just the most powerful creatures, we start off at number six with Shadow Self, which doesn't really count. You you see, Shadow Self cannot deal any damage. Now, Shadow Self is a phenomenal card. It's a sponge. It sits there and any damage that would be directed to another creature would be directed to him instead, as long as it's a non-spectre neighbour. So your neighbours that aren't spectres, the damage just comes to you instead. That's quite good, but come on, it's not really the most powerful creature, it's just a sponge. Now, in this game, there is one 8 power character. There is one 8 power creature, and it is Troll. Troll is the only 8 power in the entire game, and that is the cutoff. Because Troll is an 8 power, there's no downside, and when you reap, you get to heal free damage. As soon as you get past 8, you can have creatures with more than 8. We got 5 of them, not including Shadow Self, but they all have a significant downside. So if we start off with Wix, this, this Dominator, I don't know how to pronounce it, ladies and gentlemen. 9 power, 1 armor, and it's got Taunt, which means that you can't attack its neighbors unless they also have Taunt. You've got to attack him. It's so good, but it enters play stunned. Because once you get above 8 power, there is a downside. And that is true for all of them. There is another 9 power. It is Pit Lord. And Pit Lord is one of the biggest risk-reward cards in the entire game. Upside 9 power is great. Upside 2 Ember is great. Upside, it's got Taunt, so you have to attack him. You can't attack his neighbours. Downside... If Pit Lord's in play, you have got to choose Dis as your active house. Now, somebody did post on the Facebook group the other day an example of Pit Lord ending up as a Maverick in a deck that doesn't have Dis. Maverick is where you get a card which should be in another house, but gets Mavericked into a new house. So Pit Lord came in as a Brobnar in a deck that doesn't have Dis. So if you actually play that card, then you have to choose Dis as your active house. But you have no discard. It's a pretty big downside. In at number three, we have Gromit. Gromit is a very good, very powerful creature. Gromit is a 10 cost. But you can't play creatures. Yowza. Now the good news is, if an enemy creature is destroyed fighting Gromit, they lose an Ember, which is great. But once you drop Gromit, you cannot play any creatures. So, you have really got to time this one correctly. In at number two, the third Mars creature in the top five. Mars does dominate the most powerful creatures list. It is Chuff Ape. An 11 power, which is a bit nuts. With Taunt, which is a bit nuts. And when you fight or reap, you can sacrifice a friendly creature and fully heal Chuff Ape. But it enters play stunned. Yeah, this happens to a few of the more powerful ones. We can live with that. But the most powerful creature, at least on the face of it, is Khalifi Dragon. A 12 power, the only 12 power in the entire game. And when you fight or reap, you gain an ember and deal 5 damage to a creature. When I say this is the most powerful, I don't just mean purely in terms of it being the only 12, although it is. But dealing 5 damage to a creature will be enough to destroy a lot of creatures. Plus you gain an ember... That's ridiculous. Two ember and destroying a creature when you reap. Oh, but you can only play it if you've got seven ember or more. Which is super awkward, of course, because at the beginning of your turn, if you've got six ember or more, you have to spend six of them to reap a key. It is difficult to get Khalifi Dragon into play, but when you do, oh my lordy, it's awesome. Now, this is the point of the video where we have to say commiserations to a bunch of houses. Logos, they cannot do any better than six. And there's only one of them. Titan Mechanic, 
is the biggest, baddest creature in the Logos house, and it's got six. Now, the good news is, if you've got it on a flank, each key costs minus one. I have a deck with three of these in, and if I can get two of them on the flanks, oh, oh, oh it's great. You're forging keys for four, although as soon as they're both on the flanks, you can't play any other creatures. But sometimes it's worth it, ladies and gentlemen. If we have a look at Sanctum, they cannot do any better than six power. Although they have got Champion Anaphiel, Champion Tabris, Frankus, Sanctum Guardian, and Vimos Lightbringer, all of which have six power, and a bunch of them have armor. So you know what? They can't do any better than six, but there are a bunch of them. Now, I did tell you about Shadows having Shadow Self, but I told you it didn't really count. And once you get beyond that, you've got Dodger as a five cost. That's right. If you don't count Shadow South and it can't attack, so I don't think you should. The biggest, baddest creature in Shadows is Dodger, but it does deal an ember when you fight. I should mention, though, that 11 of the creatures in Shadow have Elusive, meaning the first time you attack them, they take no damage, and four of them have Skirmish, meaning when you attack your opponent, you don't take any damage. So actually... Shadows do cover for this a little bit by being sneaky little blighters which are very hard to destroy. And then Untamed can do no better than Big Twig, which is a 7 cost. Now, on the one hand, when you reap, you stun and exhaust a creature, which is great. On the downside, you can only fight stunned creatures. Which is a little bit of a pain. Because you kind of got to reap one turn and then fight the next. So, yes, it's a seven cost of a significant downside. But then again, it's got an amazing reap ability. Because, of course, your opponent will start the turn with a creature exhausted. So they can't unstun on their first turn after you do this. Then they can unstun on the second turn. So they can actually use that creature essentially for two more turns. So that is a very powerful thing. But then there are a bunch of creatures that aren't necessarily that powerful, but could be. So let's have a quick look at the top five creatures that can get to really big power. Now, we've got Niffle Queen and Niffle Ape. I'm leaving them off the list for now. Niffle Queen is a six power, which gives each other friendly beast plus one power, and each other friendly Niffle creature plus one power. And we do have Niffle Ape. Which is quite nice. It's got only a free power though. Now if you've got a couple of Niffle Queen. Then they're both 8 power. But even then you're only as high as Troll. It's not that great. And then each of your Niffle Apes will be up at a 7. So it doesn't really ever get that high. And it's a little bit weird. So in at number 5. Wixilly Marauder. It's that word I can't say again. Now this one seems kind of awkward. It starts off as a 2 power. Which is exceptionally low. But you get plus one power for each ember on it. And when you play it, you capture one ember for each friendly ready Mars creature. So maybe you've got six friendly ready Mars creatures and you go straight into a nine power, which would put you in the top five in the game. I don't think it's going to often get up that high, but it could and it's worth pointing out. In at number four, we've got Eater of the Dead. This is a dis creature. It's a four power initially, but when you fight or reap, you purge a creature from a discard pile, yours or your opponent's. If you do, you put a plus one power counter on Eater of the Dead. So this one is a little bit of a slow burn, but as long as there's a creature in your or your opponent's discard pile, this basically goes up by one power every single turn. So this can build up over the course of a game. In at number three, you've got Mugwump. Now, Mugwump actually starts off as a six cost. And given that the top five are nine and above, six is a decent start. But after an enemy creature is destroyed fighting Mugwump, you fully heal and give it a plus one power counter. So if you use this for fighting, it builds up quickly. You go against a free cost. You destroy them, you take free damage, oh no, wait. You then heal the free damage and you become a 7 power. So then you take a, down a 6 power and you destroy them and you take 6 damage. But then you completely heal and you go up to an 8 power. Mugwump can really build up to be very powerful very quickly. It can go up by 1 a turn. But it goes up by one a turn while clearing your opponent's board of threats. And if they try attacking you... 
and you destroy them, you also get a plus one power counter. In at number two, we've got Mushroom Man. Now, it starts off as a two power, but you get plus three power for each unforged key that you have. So in the early game, you're an 11 power, making you more powerful than anything other than Khalifi Dragon and Chuff Ape, but without the downsides. But then as soon as you forge a key, you get out to an 8 power, which puts you up there with Troll. And then when you forge two keys, you're a 5 power, which is still alright, but it's not particularly inspiring. But the creature with the most potential to be powerful is Zizix the Many. I adore this. It's a free power, but every time you fight or reap, you may reveal a creature from your hand. If you do, you archive it and you get plus free power. So in the early game, you reap and you go from a three to a six, then a six to a nine, then even the nine to a twelve. And then you can start fighting because you're more powerful than any creature on your opponent's board. And every time you survive a fight, you get plus free power. So if you take down a free power creature or below, you are not getting any weaker. If you reap, you're just getting free stronger. Zizix the Many is not the most powerful creature initially, but it gets up there pretty quickly. I did have to bring you the two lists here, the one of the most powerful and the one of the most potential, because I don't think you can compare them particularly fairly, but I couldn't really do a list of most powerful creatures omitting any of the ones we've talked about. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the most powerful creatures in Keyforge. Tell me which are your favourite, tell me which you've got in your decks, tell me some stories. Because if Keyforge is about anything, it's about making these stories, forging them, I suppose you could say. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossie for some more rambling in the future. But by far the most important thing, as always, is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching... Wassy plays.